So we do know how to teach reading for the most part. There are still questions we need to answer. But on a foundational level, we've known for a long time how the brain learns to read. So you're right. I mean, we, we know about reading the, the printing press, you know, reading, although it's a fairly recent innovation, it's been around for long enough for us to understand it. The challenge, though, is that we don't truly understand yet. There's still a lot of questions to be answered about how the brain learns to read and why certain people have more difficulty learning to read, in part because our brains, and we hear Marianne Wolf talk about this all the time, our brains were never wired to read. What we do is we co-opt parts of our brain that were designed for other uses, we co-opt them to create this reading network. And because it's not some, you know, we can't just target one area of the brain and say, hey, this is where reading happens. There are a lot of different aspects of the brain that come, need to come together to create that reading network. And so that's why it's so complicated. And so what we've been able to do, especially with the types of imaging research that we're able to do here at Haskins, with using fMRI or FNIRS or EEG, is be able to really tease out and understand what is activating the brain, what's happening in the brain as we learn to read, especially for people who are struggling. And the flip side of that is it's going to open up a horizon for us. We can look long term on the horizon. There are so many possibilities of how we can take this research and leverage it to really be able to make an impact on an individual basis for the individual differences that children, students bring into our classrooms.